Islamic ethics, defined as good character, historically took shape gradually from the 7th century and was finally established by the 11th century. It was eventually shaped as a successful amalgamation of the Quranic teachings, the teachings of the Sunna of Muhammad, the precedence of Islamic jurists, see Sharia and Fiqh, the pre-Islamic Arabian tradition, and non-Arabic elements including Persian and Greek ideas embedded in or integrated with a generally Islamic structure. Although Muhammad's preaching produced a radical change in moral values based on the sanctions of the new religion and the present religion, and fear of God and of the Last Judgment, the tribal practice of Arabs did not completely die out. Later Muslim scholars expanded the religious ethic of the Quran and Hadith in immense detail. The foundational source in the gradual codification of Islamic ethics was the Muslim understanding and interpretations of the Quran and practices of Muhammad. Its meaning has always been in context of active submission to God, Arabic, Allah, performed by the community in unison. The motive force in Islamic ethics is the notion that every human being is called to command the good and forbid the evil in all spheres of life. Muslims understand the role of Muhammad as attempting to facilitate this submission. Another key factor in the field of Islamic ethics is a belief that mankind has been granted the faculty to discern God's will and to abide by it. This faculty most crucially involves reflecting over the meaning of existence. Therefore, regardless of their environment, humans are believed to have a moral responsibility to submit to God's will and to follow Islam as demonstrated in the Quran. This natural inclination is, according to the Quran, subverted by mankind's focus on material success, such focus first presents itself as a need for basic survival or security, but then tends to manifest into a desire to become distinguished amongst one's peers. Ultimately, the focus on materialism, according to the Islamic texts, hampers with the innate reflection as described above, resulting in a state of jahiliya or heedlessness. Muslims believe that Muhammad, like other prophets in Islam, was sent by God to remind human beings of their moral responsibility, and challenge those ideas in society which opposed submission to God. According to Kalsay, this challenge was directed against five main characteristics of pre-Islamic Arabia. 1. The division of Arabs into varying tribes based upon blood and kingship. This categorization was confronted by the ideal of a unified community based upon Islamic piety, an Ummah. 2. The acceptance of the worship of a multitude of deities besides Allah, a view challenged by strict Islamic monotheism, which dictates that Allah has no partner in worship nor any equal. 3. The trait of Mur'awwa manliness, which Islam discouraged, instead emphasizing on the traits of humility and piety. 4. The focus on achieving fame or establishing a legacy, which was replaced by the concept that mankind would be called to account before God on the day of resurrection. 5. The reverence of and compliance with ancestral traditions, a practice challenged by Islam, which instead assigned primacy to submitting to God and following revelation. These changes lay in the orientation of society as regards to identity and life of the Muslim belief worldview, and the hierarchy of values. From the viewpoint of subsequent generations, this caused a great transformation in the society and moral order of life in the Arabian Peninsula. For Muhammad, although pre-Islamic Arabia exemplified heedlessness, it was not entirely without merit. Muhammad approved and exhorted certain aspects of the Arab pre-Islamic tradition, such as the care for one's near kin, for widows, orphans, and others in need and for the establishment of justice. However, these values would be reordered in importance and placed in the context of strict monotheism. Moral Commandments In the 17th chapter, Al-Azra, The Night Journey, Verses, the Quran provides a set of moral stipulations which are among the precepts of wisdom, which thy Lord has revealed to thee that can be reasonably categorized as ten in number. According to S. A. Nagajan, professor of religious studies at the University of Toronto, these resemble the Ten Commandments in the Bible and represents the fullest statement of the code of behavior every Muslim must follow.
However, these verses are not regarded by Islamic scholars as set apart from any other moral stipulations in the Quran, nor are they regarded as a substitute, replacement, or abrogation of some other set of commandments as found in the previous revelations. 1. Worship only God, take not with Allah another object of worship. Or thou, O man, wilt sit in disgrace and destitution. Quran 17.22 2. Be kind, honorable and humble to one's parents, thy Lord hath decreed that ye worship none but him, and that ye be kind to parents. Whether one or both of them attain old age in thy life, say not to them a word of contempt, nor repel them, but address them in terms of honor. Quran 17.23 And, out of kindness, lower to them the wing of humility, and say, My Lord. Bestow on them thy mercy even as they cherished me in childhood. Quran 1724 3. Be neither miserly nor wasteful in one's expenditure, and render to the kindred their due rights, as also to those in want, and to the wayfarer, but squander not your wealth in the manner of a spendthrift. Quran 1726 Verily spendthrifts are brothers of the evil ones, and the evil one is to his lord himself ungrateful. Quran 1727 And even if thou hast to turn away from them in pursuit of the mercy from thy lord which thou dost expect, yet speak to them a word of easy kindness. Quran 1728 Make not thy hand tied like a niggard's to thy neck, nor stretch it forth to its utmost reach, so that thou become blameworthy and destitute. Quran 1729 4. Do not engage in mercy killings for fear of starvation, kill not your children for fear of want, we shall provide sustenance for them as well as for you. Verily the killing of them is a great sin. Quran 1731 5. Do not commit adultery, nor come nigh to adultery, for it is a shameful deed and an evil, opening the road to other evils. Quran 1732 6. Do not kill unjustly nor take life, which Allah has made sacred, except for a just cause. And if anyone is slain wrongfully, we have given his heir authority to demand kisses or to forgive, but let him not exceed bounds in the matter of taking life. For he is helped by the law. Quran 1733 7. Care for orphaned children, come not nigh to the orphan's property except to improve it, until he attains the age of full strength. Quran 1734 8. Keep one's promises. Fulfill every engagement, for every engagement will be inquired into on the day of reckoning. Quran 1734 9. Be honest and fair in one's interactions, give full measure when ye measure, and weigh with a balance that is straight, that is the most fitting and the most advantageous in the final determination. Quran 1735, 10. Do not be arrogant in one's claims or beliefs, and pursue not that of which thou hast no knowledge. For every act of hearing, or of seeing or of feeling in the heart will be inquired into on the day of reckoning. Quran 1736, Nor walk on the earth with insolence, for thou canst not rend the earth asunder, nor reach the mountains in height. Quran 1737, Many Muslim theologians see the golden rule implicit in some verses of the Quran and in the Hadith. The golden rule was agreed 1993 also by Muslims as a central unconditional ethical norm in the declaration toward a global ethic.